industry that we do a complete re review of systems, also asking about um, prior history of skin diseases. Uh, again, has this individual experienced problems with regard to bleeding or bruising? What is their general skin condition? So again, you will have um, obtained a skin assessment and also incorporated a pressure ulcer risk assessment. Uh, assessing with regard to the presence of possible skin lesions. And again, we want to inquire about any delayed healing of any sores or lesions. Um, beginning with inspection, palpation, again, uh, assessing the uh, skin for color and distribution, assessing with regard to skin turgor. Keep in mind with the older, older adult that they will have decrease in terms of elasticity, so it's preferable to go and assess the turgor over the sternum or even the forehead. We also need to assess in terms of the presence of edema. And with regard to edema, um, one plus edema equals a depth of two millimeters. Two plus um, edema equals a depth of four millimeters. Three plus edema is a depth of six millimeters. And four plus edema is a depth of eight millimeters. Again, you may also, um, with edema, uh, this could be uh, described as generalized versus, again, being localized to a specific area of the body. In addition, we need to uh, know characteristics of any skin lesion. So again, one of the things you can do is the A, B, C, D, E mnemonic. Uh, that is A, looking at the lesion for asymmetry. B is describing it in terms of the border. Is it circum uh, circumscribed? Um, C is with regard to color, D is the diameter, and E would be with regard to evaluation or elevation. So again, um, a macule would be flat, a papule would be raised. Again, is it a wheel or a hive? Um, so again, um, you need to be descriptive with regard to that. The next is that you want to pay particular attention to any areas that are most likely to break down. So again, we know that the bony prominences, uh, the elbows, the heels, the ischium, um, the sacrum, these are areas that are particularly vulnerable in terms of pressure. With regard to untreated wounds, again, you want to go ahead and document in terms of the location, the extent of tissue damage. Again, um, you need to be uh, specific with this in terms of your initial assessment. We want to um, record in terms of the length, the width, and also the depth. Is there bleeding present? Um, is there a foreign body in the um, wound? Um, the other would be in terms of are there uh, vermin such as maggots? And the other is, are there any associated injuries with that? And then we also need to confirm the individual's status with regard to their tetanus um, immunization. The other would be in terms of treated wounds. And again, with this, still documenting the appearance, the uh, size, drainage, the presence of any edema, as well as pain. And if the individual has any uh, drains or tubes present, again, we want to know the type. Um, if, in fact, they are self-contained as far as suction to gravity, or may they may, in fact, be connected to some type of suction device. Um, in assessing our pressure ulcers, again, it's very important that you document the location of the ulcer in relation to a bony prominence. Also, we are looking at measuring the size of the ulcer in um, millimeters or centimeters. And again, this is very important for baseline. And usually in a long-term care facility, we will go ahead and document um, or reassess this at least once a week. In addition, you want to go and determine if there's any undermining or sinus tracts, um, the stage of the ulcer, and also the color of the wound bed. With regard to the stage of the ulcer, keep in mind you can't stage the ulcer.